All right, guys. So since we've reached that 25 year mark, we are beginning to see some R34s. This example actually came straight from Australia. I'm sure it went from Japan, of course, to Australia, but nonetheless, it's here in the States and it's a 99 R34 GTT. So it's got the RB25 DET in it. Uh, this thing came into us basically for a health check. So we performed a compression test on the engine, made sure the ignition timing is where it needs to be, address any small issues it has. So we did a little tune up on it as well. I replaced the fuel filter, spark plugs, and uh, did all the fluids in this bad boy. So the next thing we wanted to do is get it on the dyno and see what the state of tune was. So here it is. We are limited, of course, because in Japan, they limit your speed. So we try to do a fourth gear pass, but you can see we were cut off right before 6,500 RPM. That was basically, we're about 110 miles an hour is as much as we got before it stopped us on the factory ECU. So boost is about five, you know, it's a little low. I'm thinking it should be making more about six or seven pounds of boost. AFRs are pretty good. And then right as we get into 5,000 RPM, it starts getting pretty rich. So don't know if that's the factory tune. This is our first one that we've got on the dyno, but it's definitely safe. It's low boost. So this thing, you know, the next thing you could do is definitely upgrade it. So, you know, putting in a Haltech ECU, boost control, solenoid, a few little upgrades. This thing already has essentially a, just a homebrew Midas exhaust, if you will. It's got the Apex air filter on it for an intake. And that's really all this thing's got to it. So all in all, not bad numbers. 250 wheel in fourth, 242 in third gear. Uh, that way we can go all the way to redline with this bad boy and about 226 foot pounds of torque in fourth, 217 in third gear. So we'll see, maybe we'll be doing a few little upgrades to this bad boy, kind of see what we can do uh, with what it's got and a good standalone computer and you know, bring the power up, maybe make about 13 pounds of boost or so with it on, on our 91. Good morning guys. We have got a 2014 GTR in here and uh, we were tasked with basically trying to figure out why it's not running correctly and kind of decoding what's been done to it. So we knew that on our test drive, it was misfiring heavily. As soon as you gave it any throttle, uh, usually most of the time that's gonna be ignition related, either spark plugs, coils, it could also be fuel delivery. But after a few little tests and tweaks, uh, we put a fresh set of plugs in it, checked all the coils. We had noticed that one of the coils had been replaced. Uh, usually unusual to just do one, unless you have a particular misfire in that cylinder but we got through that and then decoding the rest of it so we were tasked with uh, getting it on the dyno checking the current state of tune on it and uh, we couldn't get really far with it because we found a few issues once we hooked up our laptop and tuning software on there and uh, we decided that it would be safer and better if we just started from scratch so that's what we did and looking at it all it really looks just kind of your run-of-the-mill gtr it doesn't look like anything really has been done to it um you can tell it's just got three inch intakes flex fuel kit and not much more than that so come to find out once we made a pass on the dyno we immediately knew it did not have factory turbochargers on it. It had definitely upgraded turbochargers, making more boost than we anticipated and definitely more power than we anticipated for a stock turbo GTR. So once we figured out that, we cleaned up a few of the sensors. We added a Visconti speed density kit. This thing did have an SD kit on there, but it was usually a little different than the way they usually are run off the charge pipe on bank one. So we fixed that. Flex fuel kit wasn't even hooked up correctly. So got all that stuff addressed and we ended up making some decent power. So not knowing everything about this and trying to figure out where we're at, we're not trying to go too crazy with it. So we ended up making about 830 wheel on it and it did really, really well. So we'll leave it there for now trying to keep the torque down as well. These things like to make, you know, with certain different turbochargers, you might make a little bit more torque. So this one was a little bit more work to get the torque under control and try to keep the power up. But all in all, the owner can enjoy this thing, which is the priority and have fun with it. So yeah, happy with the outcome 
and uh, it's off to see another day. All right, guys, we were about ready to get this car tuned on the dyno. We wanted to do a little bit more tuning and cleaning up. We noticed that it had the original regulator and damper, and we figured, hey, let's replace the fuel filter while we're at it. So we got the fuel filter out, and we noticed immediately when we pulled that fuel filter out that the fuel coming out of it was rust, and that's no good. You know, definitely don't want to tune it that way. And our fears are realized. We've got the fuel pump assembly out of this thing, and you'll see the video of what it looks like on the inside, but it's not good. So these fuel tanks aren't made anymore which is a total bummer. So we're gonna see what our options are to try and get this thing cleaned out as best as possible and see if we can stop the cancer. So yeah, our plans for tuning this thing are on pause until we can get all this resolved. So take a look at that fuel pump or that fuel tank on the inside and you'll see just how bad it is. And that, that isn't even the worst that we've seen in the past. So let's see if we can try and contain this and get this thing so that it's not uh, running rust water through the fuel system. All right.